Let's get familiar with key signatures. Uh, we're going to use Teoria for this. So I'm going to head on over to Tutorials and choose Reading Music. This is going to get you started. Go all the way down to Key Signatures. And you can read all of this. Basically what this is saying is that we're going to be in a key that uses F sharp and C sharp for the entire piece. So instead of writing F sharp and C sharp all the way through each measure, we're going to stick them over on the end here. It's also convenient because you can learn the tonal center of any piece of music pretty much by looking at this clue over here in the corner. There are other factors that determine what key you're actually in, and more on that later. But for the purposes of this lesson, I want you to learn that when you see two sharps, that's the key of D major. Here's all your keys. There are a total of 15 keys. Eventually, you're going to have to memorize all of these keys, that one sharp equals the key of G, two sharps equals the key of D, and so on. But right now, I'm going to show you a trick where you can figure out what key you're in based on the sharps or flats that you see in the key signature. Here's how it works. Ask yourself this question. What sharp is that? Well, that's F sharp. F sharp is a half step away from G. It's the leading tone in the key of G. So F sharp points to G. This is G major. What is the last sharp here? Well, it's C sharp. If that was a note, right, it would be C sharp. So C sharp is the leading tone in the key of D. This is the key of D major. Here's A major. Once again, last sharp is G, G sharp. G sharp points to A. It's the leading tone in the key of A, the seventh scale degree. And this continues, this process of taking the last sharp that you see in the list and going up by a half step. So uh, this is D sharp, that points to E major. This is C sharp, that points to B major. This is E sharp, that points to F sharp major. This is B sharp, and that points to C sharp major. So that's how you learn all of the sharp keys with that little leading tone trick. Now here's an example of learning the relative minors of all of these keys. Let's put that G up here on the top. So we've determined that that F sharp is the leading tone and it's going to point us toward G. That's G major. So now drop it down a third. So that G is on the top of the staff. I'm going to draw a note right here. That's E. So that's E minor. You have to take into account the actual key signature too. So let's do another one. In this key right here, we have a C sharp. That's going to lead us to the key of D major. Now if I drop it down a third, I get the relative minor, which is B minor. Pretty simple, right? Last one. This is going to be tricky because it has a sharp in it, but watch. This is uh, G sharp. It's going to lead us to A major. So I'm going to write an A up there. Now, just below it, a third below, is F sharp. It's F sharp because this is an F sharp right in the key, right in the key signature here. So don't answer that the relative minor of A major is F minor. It's not. It's F sharp minor. Last one before we move on to flat keys. This is E major because this last sharp, D sharp, points to E. I'm going to drop down a third and draw a note in, and that is going to be C sharp minor. So that's how you can tell all the relative major and minor keys in sharps. Let's go to flat keys. There is a similar trick, except for the first key. This key with one flat in it is F major. I like to think of it like this. The word flat starts with the letter F. So if I see one flat in the key signature, it is the key of F. Flat for F. One flat. Next, B flat major. When we did sharp keys, we took the last accidental and we went up a half step. In this case, we're going to take that flat right there, E flat, and we're going to go back one flat. So the name of this key is the name of this flat right here, B flat. Here's how this system works over here. The last flat here is A flat. If I go back one in order, I get the key of E flat. It works over here too. Here's the last flat, that's D flat. If I go back one, I get A flat, and that's the name of this key. Continuing, this is G flat. I'll go back one and I'll get D flat. Now, 
Eventually, you will remember that when you see five flats, you're in the key of D flat. When you see six flats, you're in the key of G flat. And when you see seven flats, you're in the key of C flat. But this trick does work. You can go to that last flat, which is F flat right there, and go back one, and you get to C flat. Now, the same trick actually works for relative minor in flat keys. So let's say we have F major up here. I'm going to draw an F up at the top of this staff. Now I'm going to go down a third, and there's the relative minor. So in B flat, it works too. In B flat, if I draw a little flat, right, if I draw a note on this line, B flat, I'll draw another one just below, a third below, and I get G minor. The key signature thing does come into effect with this as well. So for example, let me skip down here. I'm going to draw a D flat on this line, because that's the name of the major key. To figure out the minor key, I just draw a note, a line below. And because there's a B flat in this key signature, the relative minor of D flat major is B flat minor. So that should help you quite a bit in learning to memorize your major and minor key signatures in both sharps and flats. Good luck.